Hi, my name is Katrine and uh, today I'm going to teach you how to make a unique abstract plaster sculpture. You need different things uh, to make this plaster sculpture and I'm going to show you exactly what you need. Okay, I have here uh, one bucket with one liter of water in it. Over here, <clears throat> plaster uh, in a certain amount. I have uh, weighed this on my scale and then I have an empty bottle, a little bit used, as you can see. I have this one, and also I should have cleaned it a little bit more, but I hope it will work. Um, a nylon stocking, yes, that's weird. I'm going to tell you why. And um, this kind of balloon, it's called the punch ball balloon, and it's uh, it, it can hold very well. So this is the type that I'm using. And then also, a big bucket of water because you really don't want the plaster to get down uh, your drain and uh, destroy your sink and stuff like that. So you need to uh, clean everything, even though I didn't do it very thoroughly last time, as you can see. Um, but you need to clean everything in the bucket and also wash your hands here. Uh, so the big amounts of plaster will just be here and not in the sink, okay? You take plaster in the hand, in your hand, and then you do like this on the surface of the water. Because the reason why I'm doing this is because it will make, you can see it can, will make like small islands here on the surface and it will sink down to the bottom and um, it will prevent, uh, the, this method will prevent uh, big lumps. Maybe there will be some, but it will be less than if I just put the water in the bucket with the so this is a nice method. We could have been doing this outside on the balcony. That would actually have been very nice today because it's not very windy. So you can choose to do it outside if you have that possibility. A lot of people <clears throat> would maybe prefer <laughs> to put um, something to, you know, cover the floor. I don't care. I like to clean. So, but you can see actually <clears throat> this amount should fit like because I weighed it. Uh, should fit this amount of water, but I think it will be a little bit too thick if I use all the plaster. And you can see it's like a very thin tomato soup, and that's like the way we want it to be. Not like a thick gravy or something. Um, this is actually a very nice, it's very nice, and maybe a little bit more. And the more you practice, the more you'll just get the hang of this and also get to know how this should feel to be perfect. The thing you don't want to do is put your hand down and do like this, because then a lot of oxygen will go down in this bucket and we don't need that. So you just put your hand down like this and then you squish the little lumps that you can feel down here on the bottom. Yes, and it doesn't have to be perfect, who cares? Uh, it won't have any effect. So, and now you see, this is why you don't want to go and wash your hands in the sink. So, I'm just going to do like this. Yes, and I'm ready to move on. You saw this inside. Please <laughs> try to clean your things a little bit better than I did, but I'll show you that this can work even though you forgot to uh, clean this one. So. I'm going to put it here and then I'm going to pour the plaster up here in the bucket and I knew that this would happen because it can't really go through but I'll take this and we'll make it work anyway and this is really because I don't want to throw things away I don't want to throw this away and I, I reuse everything because I think it's disgusting to throw plastic away so and you just make all the, put all the plaster, make all the plaster go through here and down to the bottom, like this, with lumps and everything. Okay, then we need to get air into this balloon, okay? Like this, this is perfect. And then you need to hold very tight here and then put this here. Don't put it all the way down because then it will be very difficult to take it off. And now we need to turn this around. 
hair out of the balloon like this yes and now you know all the air is out when you make a mess and then we tie a knot here and we can just maybe clean this a little bit like this in the bag you don't have to though and then we use some alum stocking and the reason is we want the friction to be perfect um, because we're going to to um, to use something tools and stuff on this one so I have to it's a little bit difficult to do this alone so maybe if you have someone who can help you that would be nice but I've tried it before so I succeeded okay then we're ready to move to my work table okay there are several things you can do now um, you have to work and you have uh, a time frame limited time because this will happen once it's in here so I'm going to show you what you can do if you have some rope you can uh, do this and then actually do it very like hard like this because it won't break um, this will hold very well and if it does break the nylon stocking will help you so it won't run all over the table but I don't want to make this shape today you can use a lot of ropes on it and tie knots very firmly. I think I want to do something different. Okay, I would really recommend you um, to go through your home and choose some objects that you can use uh, while working on this. I found this one. I want to see what happens if I push this down here until it hardens. You can also use, yeah, pretty much everything. This maybe. Oh, that one, that would be nice also, to hold it down like this and see what shape it hardens in. But you need to stand here until it hardens because uh, if you let it go, you see, it will do like this and it will, um, and you won't be able to see where it touched uh, your sculpture. So you need to have a little bit of patience. Now, this, if I touch it, it's warm to the touch because it's uh, hardening inside of uh, the balloon and as you can see, I chose to put it on top of this. I could have done a million different things to this, but this was my choice today. Okay, this is actually warm as well. Chemistry, we love it. <clears throat> and now we're going to open this and I'll start by taking off the nylon stocking. And I try to save this for the next time again, because we don't want to throw things out. Now this looks like the Jeff Koons poodle or something like that. Very uh, vibrant in color. I like this, it's very funny, I think. Um, what we cannot reuse is the balloon, of course, but I'll need maybe some of my ceramic tools here to just open it and you just need to yeah, be a little bit violent here. And now you can see the sculptures out. And I want to show you that um, you can keep on uh, working on the surface if you want to. This is my favorite tool for doing this job. You can also use, I found out, a teaspoon that's very effective. Um, but look at this. I can scrape off this thing here. And if I keep doing that, I can do this if I want to repair the holes. Look at this, because it's still, it's, it hasn't hardened completely. It will harden in like, completely in like uh, two, three weeks. Um, it depends on the size. And um, then you can see <clears throat> it will turn white like this. After this has cooled off, and it will in a moment, it will be cold to the touch because there's still water in it. And that's why you can see this has a gray uh, color. When all the water is gone, uh, it will be white like this. So, but you can use this tool. You can actually see it takes shape of what, what is it's touching. I don't know if this was the rubber band or something, or just the inside of the balloon. Um, but if you want to wanna move, remove this, you can do it very gently with this or with a teaspoon. And 
if you like to draw, for instance, uh, you can also choose to have like a tool and and draw on things like that all the way around. I don't want to perfect this now and make it perfect. I just want to show you how to mount it if you want to. I have this drill and this is for wood because it has this little thing um, and it makes it easier to, um, to get into the plaster. So I want to recommend you to use this. When you want to mount this, it's very useful, I think, to um, elevate it a little bit because then it's easier to see how it will look good when you mount it. So I always use this and then I try to move um, the sculpture in different directions to see how it will look good. Um, and I find that it's very often um, when it touches uh, the least possible point um, because then it gets more elevated, I think. So I think that I would maybe like to mount it right here. Let's try that. If you're not used to using power tools, don't worry, just do it. Um, so this was the place that I wanted to mount it. And then I'm just going to drill here. But of course you have to, because you have to drill a hole uh, of this size, of course. And you have to be sure that you won't drill up here. So I try to do it a little bit here. So there will be room to drill all the way through. Okay. Now I have drilled a hole and I have put this uh, onto this. And it's of course very important that you use the right size uh, when you drill. So it matches the size um, of metal here. Um, yeah, so it will fit when you put it on. So this is a sculpture and now it's done. And if you want to polish it, please be aware that you need to do it outside and put on a mask um, just to be careful and take care of your respiration system. So, yes, that's all for now. Thank you very much.